Like other democracies around the world, the Isle of Man is governed by men and women elected by voters from the general population. If you are 16 years and over and have lived on the island for 12 months or more, you can register to vote in Manx elections. Voting was first introduced in the island in 1866 in an act of Tinwald, and the first election was held the next year. This rare photograph shows Athol Street on the morning of the island's first ever general election in 1867. In those early days, the number of people who qualified to vote was relatively small, and those who were elected weren't paid anything. There was no salary, so only people with independent means could afford to stand for Parliament. But as the years went by, changes to the legislation broadened the qualification, and property-owning women were given the vote in the island as early as 1881, many years before England. Nowadays, the electoral register can include anyone over 16 who has lived on the island for more than 12 months. But you have to ensure that the head of your household has entered your name on the form that is circulated to every home each year. This has to be done on an annual basis. And nearly anyone on the register who has lived on the island for more than five years and is over 18 can stand to be a member of the House of Keys an MHK, and every five years the 24 seats of the Keys are up for grabs. The island is divided up into constituencies, geographical areas each of which return members to the House of Keys. The boundaries of these constituencies have recently been redrawn, and the number reduced from 15 to 12, each now containing in the region of 4,000 voters and each constituency will return two MHKs. The twelve new constituencies are Russian, Arbury, Castletown and Maloo, Glenfaber and Peel, Michael and Eyre, Ramsey, Garth, Onken, Middle, and four in Douglas, North, East, West and Central. Anyone who decides they want to be an MHK first of all chooses where they want to stand usually but not always in the constituency where they live. They need a proposer and a seconder and the signatures of at least 20 people on the electoral register in their area. Once their nomination has been accepted, well, then the hard work begins. There's the manifestos to get out, attractively designed statements of your beliefs and what you intend to do for the island and your voters. As a candidate, you're entitled to one free mail shot, but you'll also want the personal approach. A presence in the landscape is important. Election time is always marked by the huge number of posters around the island with the reassuring smiles of the prospective candidates following you as you pass. And one thing you'll need as well is an election team. Supporters who'll put up posters, decide on your strategy, fill envelopes and generally lift your profile. All candidates make an attempt to visit every house in their constituency. With around 4,000 voters to visit, it's quite a job, especially if they keep you talking. But listening to their problems is really why you're there. Um, I would say predominantly the people are worried about the future. You know, it's the economy, it's their jobs. You know, what's going to happen if there are, you know, there's a lot of civil servants concerned, you know, with regards to possible downsizing. Uh, so it's, it's the general future that everyone's worried about. If your voters were out when you called, then leaving a manifesto and a contact number shows you've made the effort to engage with them. But as the weeks go by, the constant doorstep conversations require a real commitment and focus. After nine weeks of canvassing, you start to say the same things and you start becoming repetitive. And you've got to be careful that it doesn't sort of sound as though you're not genuine about what you're talking about. And, uh, I'm very much aware of that, so I try to change what I'm saying from, from day to day so that I don't sound too stale and, and, and too old. You know, uh, I do genuinely believe in the things that I'm saying and I want it to, you know, people to think that that's it, that is the case. 
Anyone who doesn't get a chance to talk with you on the doorstep can always hear you in action at the requisition meeting. Usually one or more of these are held in a suitable hall in each constituency in the days leading up to the election. They're chaired by a respected member of the local community, usually the captain of the parish, and all the candidates are expected to be there to answer questions from the public who will make their judgments on who to vote for. Do you believe that the population of the Isle of Man is suffering at the moment for the prices they pay for utilities and services? I particularly have in mind the airport, £2 million deficit, the price of electricity, and in the private sector, the price of oil and gas. And what are you going to do, if anything, to alleviate our suffering? They're sitting on the government books, £175 million of debt concerning the MEA. And that must um, illustrate, if nothing else, um, how government took its eye off the ball. Um, as for the rest, how much more... Election 2011 coverage. Apart from features in the newspapers, each of the candidates will also be given an equal time on Manx Radio to put forward their views and be questioned. I've done a considerable amount and I'm now wanting to do more. I feel that we can do more. Eventually, the big day arrives. No more electioneering. Now it's a matter of getting everyone out to vote. Each constituency will have several places to vote, or polling stations, and these will be open between 8am and 8pm. Each polling station is run by a returning officer and their team, who ensure that the voting rules are followed to the letter. Each voter will have been advised by post of their particular polling station, and here they'll be given a ballot paper and go to a booth to put a cross by the candidates they wish to see elected. The candidates and their supporters, all with their different coloured rosettes, are in evidence throughout the day as a last-minute reminder to voters. At 8pm, the polls close. The ballot boxes are sealed and are taken from the polling stations to a central counting station in each constituency. When they're all in, the doors are locked and the counting begins. Only people who've taken an oath of secrecy are allowed to attend the count and they must undertake not to reveal how the count is going or any other details to anyone outside. Nervous groups of candidates and their helpers stand round watching the piles of papers being sorted and counted and hoping to get an idea of the way things are going. Any more dirt falls? There's two up there. Some ballot papers might be called into question. Not everyone clearly marks their preferences. So the returning officer has to make a judgment as to whether that vote is valid or not. This is done with the approval of the candidates. And the purpose of this announcement is to allow the candidates to consider whether or not they want a recount. If the count is close, then any of the candidates can call for a recount. It's obviously a tense time. Losing your seat is, in effect, losing your job. And if you're standing for the first time, well, it's like a very public job application. Ladies and gentlemen, as returning officer for the constituency of Russian, I hereby declare that the total number of votes given for each candidate in this election are as follows. Only when the count is officially complete will the results be made known. And these are broadcast live on Manx Radio. David Jones. For the winning candidates, smiles all round. But for those who've lost their seat, it's a matter of putting on a brave face. Unfair to ask you this, probably you're still a young man at 51. Um, any idea what you might do now? I'm definitely, definitely going to go to the Albert to watch Everton beat Liverpool on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your priorities right. That's my next priority. Thank you. On the next Tuesday after the election, 
the first sitting of the newly elected House of Keys. There'll be some familiar faces, those who've been re-elected, but there'll be some new ones as well, and who knows where their political career will take them, and indeed, the Isle of Man. So, after the months of electioneering and quite a bit of personal expense, the successful candidates, watched by a packed public gallery, are ready to be sworn in by the island's deemsters in the Keys Chamber and to start their five-year term as members of the House of Keys.